Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. Ooh, modern art, that's neat. Welcome to another episode of Dear Blocko. This is where I answer your questions about the body or the world and me. You guys have a lot of questions for me. Although some of the questions were a little personal. I'm not giving you my credit card info, guys. Let's pull a Philly D and jump right into it. Vince asks, what happens if you get rabies? If a person gets rabies, it can be pretty serious. That's because it's a viral infection that can affect your nervous system and cause your brain to swell up. After a relatively short illness, it can lead to death, which is bad. You can get rabies by coming into contact with the nervous tissue of affected mammals and having it enter your body through something like an open wound, but that's pretty rare. You mainly get it if a rabid animal bites you after it had rabies long enough for the infection to make its way to its saliva. Symptoms of rabies can include anything from a fever or a sore throat to a person fearing water after they had severe throat spasms when trying to take a drink. Then paralysis can set in, starting at the legs and moving up to the head. In the end, most people will die from cardiac arrest or respiratory failure. If you're ever bitten by an animal, you should get help right away. According to the CDC, you should wash the wound with soap and water for at least five minutes. Then go see a doctor as soon as possible so that they can decide if you need any more medical attention. Jeremy asks, Dear Blocko, what happens to our brain when we get angry? Well, when you get angry and go all Hulk smash, your brain can draw blood away from your gut and move it into your muscles, readying yourself for any physical activity that your inner green friend might have to deal with. In this way, anger can trigger your body's flight or fight response. In most stressful situations, your amygdala sends out a distress signal to your hypothalamus, which is like the command center of your brain. This communicates with the rest of the body through your nervous system so that you can react to whatever situation you're in, like catching up to that ice cream truck that's getting away. Hey, get back here and take my money. I want a banana fudge pop. Do you guys want anything from the ice cream man? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, now for your guys' favorite part. Questions for me. Marshadow Gaming YT asks, Life Noggin, what do you do during your free time? I do a lot of stuff when I'm not hosting Life Noggin. I like to ride my bike, make art, create giant platypus robots and make them fight to the death, go swimming, you know, normal everyday stuff that you humans do. Damon Candy 101 asks, Life Noggin, can you ever contact your animator? We actually talk all the time. Well, I talk to them. They're usually busy creating stuff for me to interact with. Sometimes they mess with me, like my head just falls off for some reason, or my house is now a loaf of bread. But I like to think that's just their strange way of saying, I love you and now I have shoes made of snakes. So thank you, animator, for that. Do you have any questions about the human body, the world around you, or anything for me? Let me know in the comment section below and make sure you use the hashtag DearBlocko so I can find it. Do you have any art that you've made for Life Noggin? You can share it with me on Twitter or Instagram at Life Noggin, or you can send it to our PO box. If you enjoyed this video, check out the last Dear Blocko I did where I answer more of your questions. Why do we have slash get body hair? You humans are thought to have body hair as sort of a evolutionary leftover from your hairier ancestors. As always, my name is Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.